Map number five between Yaws. Oh, a little bit of smack talk here. And Cash, it wasn't even, even smack talk, it was uh, Cash kind of complement complimenting Yaws. That was the first fight we saw down on Echo Isles at the Merchant, where he focused out the walkers immediately. And Cash is kind of impressed with this. And Yaws says, yes, it's very strong if you have the ability to do so. And Cash says that because of that he had to go for the hero kill to force his opponent out. Alright, I don't really know what they're saying with this. So, yeah, let's do the intro again. <laughs> Top right of Melting Valley starting... Oh shit, do I have the colors right? Yes, I do. We are starting Yaws in red, playing human, of course. Bottom left of Melting Valley is Cash, playing Orc in the yellow trunks. So far we have always seen Cash being very aggressive early on, and I think this was primarily to delay Yaws' leveling to deteriorate him from... no, prevent him from... Um, Getting level 3 early and cancelling his tier 2 stuff and maybe even tower rushing. But, this is Melting Valley. The likelihood of you being tower rush is very slim because the main bases are a, a are way longer apart than any other map pretty much. Well, Nomad Isles might be bigger. Or is it? I think it's kind of the same. And Yaws is going to the other side of the map again. If this is to be aggressive himself or to try to run away from his opponent, we don't really know. But he has been found. He has been scouted out in any case. Reaches level 2 again with the parallel creeping of the militia. Something we've seen over and over. Very standard, but still nice to do. Did he creep this? No. Blade Master was looking for the human. But he, he knew he was here anyways. <laughs> Weird. Alright. Boots of speed. Here we go. And with that he will be a uh, able to drive the Archmage away. And very nicely done from Yaws. He knows the time, obviously. He looks at it and he's like, alright, I need to get out. Blade Master is trying to come for me. And I can't deal with the damage. So he needs to get his boots of speed himself. And find space on the map. Because before tier 2, he pretty much doesn't want to have anything to do with the orc. Which is the case for many races. First footman has fallen. But again, Cash is not trying to creep his blade master. That has not been his game plan at all. Not in a single one of these games. Not in a single one of these... Uh, single game of the series. Grunt finds the Archmage again. And yeah, he's, he's just looking for him over and over. This is of course pretty difficult on Melting Valley. Because there's this is such a big map with so many creep camps. On Amazonia, for example, this is pretty damn easy. Finding your opponent. But not on Melting Valley. He has the information now though. And he is coming. Heals up two of his Grunts. Not level 2 just yet. That would increase his strength significantly. Is he going for the creep? Wow! That seems really greedy for me. Like, if the Archmage comes back here with Footman in tow, uh, seems to me like that could backfire. But it isn't going to. Claws plus 9. Finally, he finds a good item for his Blade Master. Something that has also been lacking for quite a while. I think on Echo Isles. He bought some items from the tavern, uh, from the marketplace. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I think he did. Wasn't enough in the end, though. That fight uh, in the middle of the map, the last fight, I also really liked his uh, usage of the Scroll of Healing. Like, he saw the Archmage out of position, immediately he jumps him with a Hex and a Blade Master, and he uses the invul the Archmage does, and after the invul, then he goes for the Archmage again with the Speed Scroll, with everything he's got, pro uh, basically. But it was not enough. The invisibility kind of saving him there. 
Could have maybe tried to go for more disenchants. That's also something I'm kind of surprised about. Orcs never get dust of appearance against a human late game. Of course, if your inventory is full, that's understandable. But I don't think it was. Alright, Cash is gonna get both of these Ogre Magis. Parib of Vitality, also pretty damn good, I think. Blade Master will always be in front, tanking quite a bit of damage. And we find here Potion of Invulnerability, the big one. That's very nice. You can use it at the MK when he gets low, and during those 15 seconds you can heal up again a lot with the help of the priests. And again, it is the same thing, of course, uh, understandably so, because the Blade Master was focusing a lot of his efforts early on on creeping, eh, on harassing. He is once more underleveled. But he crept more this time. He didn't get the most experience from it, but he got two big items and the two watch rewards. And what I was referring to in the beginning of this game was like on Melting Valley sometimes we see this matchup looking differently from any other map. And there I was of course referring to the Griffin play. But oh sorry. But we're not seeing it this time. It seems like it has fallen out of the meta game. Yaws is sticking with his standard here. So even after he was down 2-0 he still had faith in his strategy and in his ability to uh, win this game. Of course, he kind of shifted his strategy. He became more passive and more careful, I guess, to make it to the late game. We haven't seen one single tower rush attempt here. Level 3 for the Blade Master. This is a lot sooner than it was the last couple of times. And yeah, pretty damn passive game so far. It seems like both these players uh, arriving at this last map in this series have kind of found respect for each other and are giving each other space and trying to build up their own little perfect army. Ank of Reincarnation, pretty nice. Another life with 500 hit points for one of his heroes. A player's forces are under attack. Both second heroes are now very close to reaching level 3. MK gets it right here. And Blade Master is in position to scout this with a lot of mana. He can keep watch for the foreseeable future. One of the wind? Mm. Yeah. I don't know. Against Blizzard is pretty nice, I think. And also, if you time it perfectly towards a fight to delay the first bolt for a lot, it's kind of nice, but I don't think it's as amazing. I think against Blizzard it's really good, though. He keeps it. Player's forces but the creep jack is inbound. Footman could have seen this coming, but it was kind of at the edge of vision. Not sure if yours in fact saw it. Level 4 Archmage. He has the TP, of course, to get out. But he wants to fight for a little while. Uh, he's, he's drawing back and yeah, he TPs out. Loses TP and a Berserker. Gets the creep camp though. One thousand four hundred gold again. Yours has been banking a lot throughout this series. And for the orc, we have quite a bit less. And Yours just wants to keep on creeping. It seems like he has found his route to play. Just stay back, stay back, hang, ba hang back, chill, chill, chill. This mountain king looks like a blade master. And then only fight at like 70 supply. Seems to be his game plan. Here we go, expansion. Cash 
seems to have had enough of this late game shenanigans. Well, at least equal economy late game. Maybe he thinks, alright, I can't win this late game one base versus one base. I need to gain an advantage somehow. And the expansion seems to be his answer. Whenever I see this, it makes me kind of sad. Like, a late game Blade Master without an invul, I think no matter what items you have, is always a mistake. Especially that simple slippers, man. Like, how much does that really do for you now? A player's forces are under attack. They keep on creeping. They keep on scouting. Yours with the footman. Cash with the blade master. This is an intense game. Both players are expecting a clash to come soon. Yours already up to 71 supply. Cash t behind by 10. Cash needs to gain time. He needs to force Yaws back into his main base over and over. I think this is a mistake, taking this creep camp here. The green one was okay, but I think after that he should have gone straight for the base to force his opponent back. I think this was a little bit too much greed from Cash. Because now Yaws is moving out and I don't see very good chances for the orc to deflect this attack. Archmage, I don't think he got the Tome of Retraining because he was cast invisible and if he uses it, he turns visible again. A player's force and he definitely wants the Blizzard. 71 for yours. 1-1 one, one upgrades, by the way, for Cash. Not more upgrades on the way. Gloves of Haste sold. Traded for a potion of mana. And I was certain yours was gonna go down here because you can't well you you, you can't really expect this. But are under like especially with invisible footmen, I think he should have definitely scouted this. I think that's a one of the few mistakes that yours has been making since the third game. Now he's creeping the bit, the big golems. Also, this army is not really good for creeping golems. <laughs> he has so much magic damage, which is of course totally useless against these. What did he find? Hood of Cunning. Meh. It's not terrible on the Shadowhunter, but it's far from great. And here, Hood of Cunning as well. Well, for the human heroes it's quite a bit worse. Because, of course, the Shadow Honor benefits from both attributes. Intelligence and agility. I mean, the right clicks of the SH aren't really good. They're, in fact, pretty shit. But, you know, every little bit counts. Invisible Footman, I think he just scouted this. I think he just scouted this. But it may be a bit too late, because now the... Double income is kicking in. He will have a lot of gold for consumables. And wisely realizing this, he creates a shop right here. Perhaps he could even get a tower or two. He's not at 80 yet, though. And Yaws is coming. Yaws has seen this, and Yaws probably knows that he needs to cancel this expansion. He doesn't have a TP. This is dangerous. But he has double invul. And we still have no dust on the on Cash's side. Understandable, of course, because uh, his inventory is full. Alright, fight's about to break out. First sacrificial footman to scout things out. Probably mainly to check on inventory space. We have no invul on the Shadowhunter. So bolts around could once more seal his fate. We have also no invul on the Blade Master. Still no invul! He's way far up in front, he could get easily... Oh, there we go. One of the wind being used against the blizzard. Clap coming in, and now the wyvern making their way... Oh, this is so dangerous from the Shadowhunter, going up here to use the wand of the wind. If yours realizes this, this could result in a bolt surround, and this Shadowhunter cannot survive that. He's not going for it just yet, though. Spirling coming in over and over and over again. The last one of the wind has been used. Now he needs to cancel the blizzard with the raiders, but they're so far out of position. 
and slowly but surely the blocking line from Cash seems to be fading away. Scroll of Speed now used. Maybe a little late, but the three Wyverns, they're in the air, almost uncontested, you could say. Still all alive. There's no Wall Elementals to deal with them. Kodo Beast eating now. Invul use on the Mountain King. That was the big one. And the MK is kind of low now. He's being healed up. But he's not as tanky as he was on Echo Isles. Wyverns killing all the casters. I love this addition of the Wyverns. Usually they always seem so useless, but without the Water Elementals, they are pretty damn strong suddenly. Blizzard coming in again, but the Ensnare deals with him for now. Bolt on the Blade Master. No invul, mind you. What's the mana looking like for the SH? Level 5 SH! He killed so much here. He still has the mana potion, uses it right here. And heals back up again. Needs to go back to his shop probably to get more healing. Oh, Blade Master, surround after the bolt. No, Heal Wave comes back in. But that was the last one. Last Heal Wave for a little bit. He has a clarity though that he can use. Wyvern are starting to get really low. Intense fight here on a knife's edge. Now MK, can he be killed? Uses the dust, uses the bolt. Blade Master, Heal and Wave. Whoa. Just barely, but that may just be the last heal wave, but the clarity is still running. But Yoz's army is so small now, and he GG's out. GG well played. In a beautiful last fight here on Melting Valley. It was a slow game with a lot of respect for each other, it seemed. But Cash finally manages to win the late game with the help of an expansion and three wyverns that were a surprise to me and probably also to Yoz. Very, very nice series. Definitely enjoyed that one.